Today's program falls between two very important and meaningful days that our country observes. Memorial Day on May 25th, a day in which we honor and salute those who gave their lives in service to our country, and July 4th, our Independence Day, reaching back to the birth of our nation, 1776. With those considerations in mind, I thought we would open today's program with our national anthem. However, I believe you will find painter, vocalist Joe Everson's presentation unique, while at the same time inspiring. It would seem appropriate in our program today to follow our national anthem with a presentation of our Pledge of Allegiance. So here is Gerald Flynn's grandson who will literally melt your heart with his very special rendering of our Pledge of Allegiance. I what was a chance for nation under God and the valuable of liberty and justice for all? The Civil War was one of the most violent, divisive periods in our country's history. President Lincoln's Gettysburg Address, following Gerald Lee's defeat at Gettysburg, has lived through the ages. I've asked Doug to read it as part of today's program. Four score and seven years ago, our fathers brought forth on this continent a new nation, conceived in liberty, and dedicated the proposition that all men are created equal. Now we are engaged in a great civil war, testing whether that nation or any nation so conceived and so dedicated can long endure. We are met on a great battlefield of that war. 
We have come to dedicate a portion of that field as a final resting place for those who here gave their lives that that nation might live. It is altogether fitting and proper that we should do this. But in a larger sense, we cannot dedicate, we cannot consecrate, we cannot hallow this ground. The brave men, living and dead, who struggled here have consecrated it far above our poor power to add or detract. The world will little note nor long remember what we say here, but it can never forget what they did here. It is for us the living, rather, to be dedicated here to the unfinished work which they who fought here have thus far so nobly advanced. It is rather for us to be here dedicated to the great task remaining before us, that from these honored dead we take increased devotion to that co cause for which they gave the last full measure of devotion, that we here highly resolve that these dead shall not have died in vain, that this nation under God shall have a new birth of freedom, and that government of the people, by the people, for the people, shall not perish from the earth. Abraham Lincoln November 19, 1863. One of the very moving presentations on our recent Memorial Day was the playing of Amazing Grace on bagpipes while showing a number of emotional and honoring moments that took place throughout our country.
As a teacher and band director of 58 years, I've been an emotional advocate of America's bands that contribute to any occasion, and particularly to the young people of all ages who make them come to life. That said, I thought you would enjoy this fun moment with 24 dedicated drummers. I was both pleased and honored when I was asked to present a patriotic program for all of you, and I've attempted to offer a varied collection of patriotic moments, and today's finale should touch your hearts with yet another fabric of our country. I think you will enjoy Ray Charles' rendition of America the Beautiful. Ladies and gentlemen, to honor America with the singing of America the Beautiful, please welcome the man and his soul, Mr. Ray Charles. What 
I was a little boy, I remember we always sang these words. Oh, beautiful, what spacious sky, what amber waves of rain. Say the brotherhood from 